Hi folks, Mike Skinner, checking in again for another little uh, chat with folks. Hopefully soon I'll figure out uh, a platform to also have a conversation with uh, some folks because that would be great because I think it's nice if you're sitting around the campfire or sitting out on your front porch having a conversation with others. Uh, I think there's, there's a richer dialogue as opposed to just hearing from me. But for now, this is what we're doing. Uh, as I navigate and learn my way through this process of YouTube channels and video content, for one who's technically challenged, <laughs> it's a joy. <laughs> and I say that facetiously. Today, I'm going to share um, a piece that I wrote for a book called You Can Help. I'm going to give a little backstory to the book, and then I'll share my little piece of the uh, what I wrote for the book. So again, the title of the book is You Can Help, and I'm going to have to don my reading glasses for this. And this was compiled and put together by Rebecca Street, and thank goodness that she did this. She's also a survivor, and uh, she reached out to 19 other fellow survivors of childhood sexual abuse, violence, assault, whatever the language you wish to use. And every one of us had a uh, piece in this. And what was kind of cool when I finally saw the finished product that I recognized uh, several friends of mine, fellow survivor advocates. So here's the uh, cover to the book. And I will be sharing the resources, the links for her website, for the book, etc. So let's start with a little something that uh, Rebecca has in the beginning. Because again, this was her, this was her brainchild, and thank goodness that she did this. Uh, I was just honored, blessed to be part of this process. For the millions of innocent people who have suffered the shame and pain of sexual abuse and assault, and for those who have lovingly accompanied them on their journey to healing. So a little backstory on Rebecca, who was the author. She's an actor, a mother of two, and grandmother. She is also a survivor of childhood sexual abuse. She began her acting career at the Arena Stage in Washington, D.C., and has performed extensively in Los Angeles and New York in TV, film, and theater. Prior to becoming an actor, she was a public high school English teacher in Maryland, where she received the Rotary Club Outstanding Teacher Award. A social activist, she began volunteer work at the age of 11 at the Little Sisters of the Poor Home for the Aged in D.C. Through the years, she has taught at a wide variety of nonprofits addressing the needs of the marginalized population and has served on the boards of Shanty, the Neighborhood Youth Association and PATH which is, stands for People Assisting the Homeless. Rebecca is grateful that her journey to recovery has finally brought her to a place where she can become a public advocate for other victims of sexual trauma and can do so without shame. She has been a speaker at the New York State Office of Mental Health Grand Rounds at Rockland Psychiatric Center and at the Mid-Hudson Forensic Psychiatric Center affiliated with Columbia University. I'm going to share a few of the uh, praises for this book. Uh, some really uh, cool thoughts. And this one's from Mike Liu, and he's the author of Victims No Longer. And if folks haven't read that book, I highly encourage you to pick that up and give it a read. So here's what Mike has to say about the book. Universal and personal, passionate and compassionate, a gift to survivors and those who love them, and will prove a valuable asset for professionals who work with trauma. This is from David Cloacy, and he's the executive director of SNAP, which is Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests. Given how rampant child sexual abuse is, there should be dozens of books like You Can Help, and yet this is the only one I know of. Luckily, Rebecca Street's guide is terrific, literally, Millions of friends and family members of victims have felt powerless. That doesn't need to happen anymore. Real answers and solid practical guidance are right here in these valuable pages. And I agree. 
This is from Martha Miller. And she's a psychotherapist and the co-founder of the One Circle Wellness Center in New York City. You Can Help is a much-needed resource for educating and empowering survivors, their loved ones, and the professionals who work with them. As a psychotherapist and social worker for over 20 years, sadly, I have seen far too many people affected by sexual trauma, and I wish that I could have given them this book to every single one of them. And then there's several other great praises, but again, you can see that on the... Uh, website for her book. So I encourage, again, I'll share the links, the resources for that to connect about getting the book, your own copy, and reading some more of some of the great words, praises from some folks. Not sure how it is for folks elsewhere where you're living, but here in New Hampshire, there's been a lot of pollen, so it's sitting, I feel it, in my throat. So... I'm talking with a cough drop in my mouth, so hopefully it doesn't get in the way of my speaking. So here's my piece for the book that I wrote. And again, grateful that I was asked and honored to be a part of this. I'm a father, grandfather, and friend. Professionally, I'm a musician who plays the guitar, sings, writes songs, plays the drums, and has released three albums. I'm also an advocate, public speaker, and writer of published articles that address the concerns of mental health, trauma, and abuse. Who I am as a person is very important to me because for many years of my life, all I felt was shame, fear, and disgust. Despite any accomplishments I achieved as a musician, father, husband, and business owner, I lived with a deep hole in my soul that no amount of effort or trying to be good was able to fill. The cause of my unremitting pain and self-hatred is that I experienced brutal and sadistic sexual abuse by both of my parents beginning when I was a very young child and continuing into my mid-teens. What made the abuse even more damaging for me was the participation of equally perverted friends, adults, who were friends of my parents. A biker, an outlaw biker, and the next cop who had been thrown off the force for brutality. All were heavy drinkers, and they were male and female. For a long time, I tried desperately to rid my mind of these horrors, but I was unable to do so. And the images of my past were a constant reminder of the dirtiness I felt. It was more than I could handle alone, and yet the taboo of talking about sexual abuse led me to isolation. As an adult, I was diagnosed with both post-traumatic stress disorder and depression and was called mentally ill. There was a lot of blame, shame, and telling me to just get over it. All of this severely impacted my ability to heal, making it difficult to navigate my way into a better future. But navigate, I did. And like other survivors, I did not do it alone. Though my recovery has been long and difficult, the rewards have been many. The very things that helped me in my youth, music and being in nature, have given me a new lease on life. I have also learned how to surround myself with loving people. Especially wonderful has been the acceptance and understanding of my friend Mary. Her love and encouragement did wonders for building my self-esteem. She encouraged me to perform again as a drummer. Gaining the confidence to return to my music and do what I love has been immensely therapeutic. When people are neither afraid nor blame me for the intrusive feelings and thoughts of the past, it is a gift. Friends and family need to realize that even one person's love and support can make a world of difference. I no longer feel weak or ashamed. I feel valued and cherished. I am finally free of the negative assumptions people once imposed upon me. And now I honor the courage, 
perseverance and resiliency I had as a young boy to survive the terrors of my youth. Another thing that has been healing for me is to learn all that I could about trauma and abuse and how it can cause physiological changes in those of us who have been sexually victimized. There is much research showing how sexual abuse affects the brain and nervous system development and that the younger the victim is when the abuse begins, the more harm it generally causes. Researching the ramifications of abuse can be very empowering for survivors, and I encourage both them and those who love them to find out as much as they can. Dr. Bessel van der Kolk's work is a good place to begin. A former president of the International Society for Traumatic Stress Studies and a professor of psychiatry at Boston University School of Medicine, Dr. van der Kolk has published extensively on the effects trauma can have on development. Survivors cannot heal in isolation. The shame and blame festers when we are left alone. We, know, we need to know we can thrive despite what has happened in the past. And that thriving is enormously nourished and enriched when we are supported and accepted by others. Receiving compassion and love do wonders for all of us. Someday, I hope there'll be a worldwide campaign to make people aware of the lifetime consequences that result from sexual abuse. I am attempting to do my small part in facilitating that awareness. I try my best to live each day to the fullest and show by example that it is possible to overcome trauma, no matter how horrific. I do a lot of advocacy work, and helping others helps me. Whatever I give, I always get back more. Lastly, I practice mindfulness, and this gives balance to my life. I work, I play, and I rest. Dr. Jim Hopper's work on mindfulness and kindness is another great resource. Recovery is a slow process. And the truth is, I doubt that I'll ever fully recover from what happened to me. But that's okay because I believe I'm a better man for having endured the suffering I experienced. I've endured. I'm still here. All I ever wanted as a child was to love, to be loved, and live without fear. Though it has taken me a long time to get to a place where these things are a reality in my life, I am deeply grateful that I have finally arrived. And I close with a quote from Richard Rohr, and this is what Richard has to say. You cannot heal what you do not acknowledge. What you do not consciously acknowledge will remain in control of you from within, festering and destroying you and those around you. So again, I encourage folks, uh, I'll share the resource, Please look up the book, order a copy for yourself, order a copy for a loved one or family members. Uh, it'll help un in understanding a lot of what we have to deal with and go through. There is healing, there is hope, and there is help. As I had mentioned in the book, I've always felt like a piece of me was cut out um, because of the abuse I experienced. And that is still there. I, I feel spiritually something has been taken. Again, I've, I have safety in my life. I have comfort. I have joy. I have peace. So I'm okay with those things, but that piece of me is still missing. I had a conversation with a friend of mine, Joanne, and she describes her feeling inside that there's a crater inside. So I know in speaking to other survivors, and fellow friends, advocates, uh, it's something, so I'm not, it's not unique to just myself. A lot of us feel that. I feel that this book is great because it helps to lessen the impact of, because we still have a, a big part of society that still sends the message that we're damaged goods because of what we 
experience. We are not. We're struggling to find the means to survive and learn to thrive. So your connection with us, uh, empowering us, accepting us, validating us, goes a long way towards that healing. It's interesting when people will ask me what I do if I'm at a gathering or a party or even on an airline flight. Or whatever. What do you do? And I explain I'm an advocate for trauma abuse and mental health concerns. And if they dig a little deeper, I'll start to share what I do. And once I raise the, the piece about child abuse and sexual abuse, it's like you suck the oxygen out of the room. And then there's this awkward pause this uncomfortableness, and then they make a hasty retreat. And it can be a long flight if someone has asked you this at the beginning and they do not want to have any more discussion on what you do. <laughs> so uh, my point to this is there's no need to fear us. Uh, if, if it's uncomfortable for you to hear about these things, Think about how uncomfortable it is for the survivor who had to experience it firsthand. So again, we need acceptance, we need support and validation from the community. We need help for folks who've endured these things, but again, the uh, chronic medical health conditions that can arise later on from these traumas and abuse, so folks need help for that, medical, dental, and, and counseling. We need help for that. For my fellow survivors, uh, again, finding peer support, whether it's in person or online. I know COVID, COVID messed up a lot of things, but it's out there. Because for me, peer support has empowered me, gave me community, it gave me a new family. One of the uh, commentators who, who gave praise for the uh, the book was David Closey, and I actually attended a SNAP conference down in Boston, Massachusetts over the weekend, and it was great. I went as a support person because my abuse came in from my home, but also at a congregational church, so mine was not in the Catholic church setting, but I have a fair amount of friends uh, that I've advocated with or just gone to support or have gone to a support group meeting. So I went to this conference, and David was there, and he's a great speaker. Um, so look him up on YouTube sometime because he he delivers you know a powerful message, but also a lot of humor. So that that was a place where I felt I belonged because most of the room was survivors. You know, I, I think there's maybe 70, 80 people. Small event, but just very powerful. So again, I was with my tribe, and I felt uh, I felt at home, and I felt welcomed. I'm gonna. As I mentioned last week, I'm going to start sharing, whether it's books, music, art, from fellow survivor advocates, folks that are in the trenches day in, day out. So this next one that I'm going to share, and again, I'll be sharing all the resources and the links in the content section of the, the channel. This is from my good friend, Rathia Lee, and the title of her book is Trauma Into Truth. Gutsy Healing and Why It's Worth It. So here's the cover. And what's neat about this book, you know, it's a, it's a short read, but it's powerful as all heck. Uh, she's also got her own her, her artwork in there. So she's just a gifted, uh, creative person doing wonderful things to help people. So again, I asked if I could share a little reading from this, and she gave me permit, permission. So on the back it says, discover your ultimate goodness, no matter what pains or traumas you have lived through. And again, there's some great praises for this book. So again, go online and see what folks have said about her. And Rathia Lee, M period, A period, is a professional dancer and performance artist living in Western Massachusetts. She is a graduate of Tisch School of the Arts at New York University and holds a master's degree in spiritual psychology. Rathia has a private counseling practice specializing in inner bonding and trauma recovery. And here's some words from Rathia. 
just a few pieces from her book. My definition of healing, to make whole, to mend the soul, to come to know and experience one's own innate goodness. One, I am an artist. I am a healer. I am a therapist. I am a dancer. I am a dedicated peacemaker. This is a book about healing and what that word means. I speak from my own full-bodied experience of wild, unkept discoveries of becoming whole. Coming to terms with my past over the last 15 years has tested my every resource. I have landed in a beautiful space where now I sit and listen to others, and it does not scare me. Sometimes I am saddened, even shocked by what people have lived through, but I am consistently touched by the courage and liveliness that comes forward to heal a soul. Trauma can be at any event that feels like threatening to a person, loss, displacement, illness, neglect, physical, emotional, or sexual abuse can manifest pathways of extreme confusion and fear. So many children and adults live through terrifying events, but do not get the chance to process, unravel, or mend that pain. This book is about completing unfinished business. My intention is to encourage you to do the work of remembering and healing because it is worth, it is worth the goods. So much good. Huge goodness and joy is waiting in the same psychic box that says, keep out. I set for myself the task of answering questions about healing from trauma asked by clients, friends, and family over the years. These are questions I have also asked myself and answered through writing, dancing, singing, performing, and painting. I painted the images on these pages during years of intensive healing as a way to connect with and express my essential intact self. Sometimes during very dark days, the process of making art became my prayer. My hope is to spark that place in you with my words and art so that we can walk together on this path less traveled. We have all suffered hurts and we all deserve to be loved through what is unresolved. Healing is an untamed spiritual journey, one that leads straight to who you are. Let's go there. And just, just a few more paragraphs. What is healing? Healing is the small voice that pierces your sleep and will not let you slumber until you've listened. It calls you towards an opening of unknown origin. It lures you to a brittle edge and asks you to jump. Healing is the memory of your child's eyes looking out at people and things without protection. Your tender wrists, your hopeful visions. Healing will ask you to crawl through muck like a soldier, through fields of demons and horrors beyond your wildest imagination. It will call you to blackness. You may slip between a crack in the earth and fall. You may find yourself covered in heavy awareness, unable to breathe. The sounds may be deafening, your body screaming. You may believe you are losing the world, all your loved ones, your sanity, your identity. Healing is merciful and will not leave you alone. True healing has hands of potent beauty. It wakes you to your deepest knowing and will not let you forget your core. Healing is the light at the end of the tunnel and the next tunnel and the next. Each time you arise like a cloud higher and higher in the sky of compassion. You will come to know your goodness despite the lies. You will find yourself standing on solid legs of truth. If your intention is to heal, I believe you can. So again, some very thoughtful, insightful words from Rathia. I've had the good fortune to actually witness, uh, some, attend some of her performances, and they're great. Uh, she can touch upon some dark stuff and still have you laughing. Just very, very creative. Originally, I wasn't going to do a song, but when I was looking over my notes last night, I said, no, I have a song that will tie in with this. So I'm going to um, close with a song. And this is a song off my uh, Pirate CD. And again, I'll have links for that because you can have hear recorded versions on Spotify and all the other digital platforms 
Amazon, Apple, etc., etc. This is off my Pirates CD. It's called My Back Door. Of course, I gotta push back. I'm working on finding a compressor limiter because I noticed when I listen to the recordings after the guitar and the singing seem to overload the microphone, so working on that. Always hoping for a friend Let us not waste our time Let us not pretend The front door is only facade The mask of humility and pride Insecure and formidable Its contents meant to hide Chambers of what resides within. Swim so near the back door, from there I'll let you in. Back there, and no pretense is genuine, authentic to the core. Soft, warm, and gentle, please believe me, there is more. There is more. Entrance to who we really are. I'm waiting for you inside, and I'll leave the door ajar. So meet me at the back door, and let us not play games. I'll greet you as I am, and I will not hide in shame. Not hide in shame. Not hide in shame. My heart has room within My door for you is open My heart has room within, yeah So meet me at the back door And I will let you in Meet me at the back door And I will, will let you in So that is my back door from the Pirate CD. I will share the lyrics also in the content section. Again, thank you for being here. And again, um, if you want to know more what's happening in future videos, please do click the subscribe and the little bell icon and that'll keep you in touch. And feel free to reach out to me at any time. Any questions, thoughts, comments, uh, I appreciate it. Thanks again, folks. Take care.